Hello, it is late morning over here in California. This teacher is relishing in her final few weeks of summer break before the new school year starts back up again. I've really loved getting to kind of reimagine my relationship to reading after finishing my graduate program in May. That was basically having me read one history book a week and having to talk about it and write about it. I am fatigued uh, by dense texts, so getting to read things that I choose, that I love, and going on that journey has really been super reinvigorating this past summer. Today is all about doing a reading challenge that also incorporates slasher films. The movies that are being referenced in the book I'll be reading as I go through this vlog, and that book is going to be My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. The only book of Stephen Graham Jones that I have read at this point in time has been The Night of the Mannequins. I listened to that on audiobook to start off my summer, and I really enjoyed it. If you love or appreciate body horror in any way, I think that will be your jam. So I was really excited to get my hands on this one right here. It is a lot lengthier than Night of the Mannequins, because that was a novella. Um, but Stephen Graham Jones is super cool. I appreciate his writing style. It's very unique. The history and the cultural background of his as an indigenous person really runs through a lot of his work. Anyway, so back to the challenge. Uh, this summer is winding down for me and I wanted a fun way to engage with the genre of horror. I want to have this opportunity to become more horror genre literate in a way that allows it to be fun and kind of a community experience. But I will be watching um, about four videos that pop up in Chainsaw here that are referenced. It's really challenging, and I know many people have negatively critiqued this book for this reason, but it's really challenging to read this book if you don't have some kind of foundation on slasher films within the, the horror genre. But I don't think that you can really understand this book if you don't have that foundation of those slasher films that she, the narrator of this book, references and she talks about them so much. She is very film obsessed. Um, so there's references, there's allusions, and it's not always explained what movie is being referenced. There's an impact and effect that we lose if we are an understanding of that. So I have read up to page 60 at this point, and I did watch Nightmare on Elm Street last night, and I got this idea kind of as I was going through the first three chapters, I was like, I think I kind of need to get a little bit more of an understanding on the films that she's mentioning, because they're a huge part of her personality that she displays in this book. Okay, so let's actually get into this book, the plot that I've read so far in like the first three chapters of it. And again, there are spoilers, so if you didn't see that in the title of this video, you've been warned. Our narrator here that we're really seeing things through primarily is Jade Daniels. She is a senior in high school when we first meet her in the beginning of the book. She lives in rural Idaho and she is of Native American ancestry. She's a very distinctive and unique character that Jones has created for this book. And it's very clear too that she is using film, specifically slasher movies, as a coping mechanism. Um, she found, finds a lot of solace in the slasher genre, which, I mean, of all things, right? Her mind definitely functions through slasher film references. So if you don't get that, you really don't get a lot of the story. So to remedy that, I definitely want to watch a few slasher films, acquaint myself with the genre that I've been neglecting all my life, and see if that will help me better understand and hopefully appreciate My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones.
good morning. It's been 24 hours since you last saw me. And I have gotten through about, I think halfway, about halfway through. I've also been able to watch Nightmare on Elm Street. And I've already been able to watch Halloween, which came out in the 70s. I'm kind of a mixed heart when it comes to where I'm at in this book. So just to kind of preface, I was really looking forward to this book. I really wanted something to be action packed. So I guess I was imagining something more structured in the way of the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, if you're familiar with that. Sadly, I feel like this book is not doing it for me, which is so unfortunate, but there are some high points in this so far. Although I'm only about 200 pages through and it's like a 400 page book, I don't think much has happened and we're halfway through the book. You have a few deaths and only um, a few of those are actually present in the narration part, like where you really get to be there in that point of view as it's happening. So a lot of deaths are happening and a lot of action, I would say, is happening on the periphery of our narrator, who is Jade Daniels. It's funny how she could be wanting eagerly for a slasher serial killer to come to town and wreak havoc on her residence. She's also really conscious and aware of people and, and has a bit of respect for them too. So it's kind of layered. And so I, I think that's what's been keeping me going and why I'm eager to pick up this book it's because she's a very fascinating person and I know some people don't care for the horror film references that come up a lot in this book, but I find them really enjoyable, especially as I've been able to watch a few more. So she mentions a lot of Nightmare on Elm Street, so watching that I think was super helpful. And she did make a lot of references to Halloween, which I did watch last night. I made the mistake of watching it while I was home alone so yeah, I would not recommend that <laughs> because the soundtrack is unnerving. So I give this about a 3.5 out of five stars in my personal enjoyment scale. So I think this was so much scarier than Nightmare on Elm Street. It just had an atmosphere and an ambiance that was bone chilling that made it very enjoyable. And I don't think Nightmare had that same kind of aura to it, although Freddy is incredibly scary. And I think with Nightmare, you got a lot more characterization going, like you really knew the people, like they're just doing their thing in Nightmare on Elm Street and you just see glimpses of them being young teens. And so you, you get more character in Nightmare versus Halloween where I don't really think I know Lori who is being played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Like I don't know who she is, what she does in her free time. I know that she's a babysitter. Basically everybody who's being killed in this film is a babysitter. Michael is killing people who care for children. So it feels very much like this um, placeholder for, for mothers and mothering. There's some commentary I feel like in this film about mothers. You have things like a knitting needle that is being plunged into his neck by Lori. And then you also have things like a hanger for clothes that she's like stabbing into him as she's in the closet. You have people like Lori who are using feminine objects in a way that are to be weaponized. So the knitting needle can create a hat, it can create a sweater. It's something specifically historically within the domain of women, but also she's weaponizing it as something that can protect her against Michael, this image of patriarchy that's trying to overpower her bodily autonomy. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on Halloween. Is this a horror slasher film that you love? Are you into this? Let me know in the comments. I feel like it is a pretty solid slasher film when it comes to my personal enjoyment. So I'm going to spend the day um, hanging out with my family. I'm gonna try to make more progress in Chainsaw. And I do have plans to watch Friday the 13th next. <laughs> Okay. Yes, um, Americans have been watching them 
watching horror movies for decades. Something other than act. Anyway, she was recently out of the country. Bullish thing too. Like she wasn't just like one of those frozen. Was like I was. This is, I think, my third day with this reading challenge. That's also a watching challenge. So far, I have watched Friday the Thirteenth. Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street and I've noticed that I've taken from a good chunk of multiple decades and tonight I will be watching Scream. I also am one chapter away. I stopped purposely, intentionally, so I had some time to watch Scream tonight and I am really happy with how it is turning and how it's really increasing its pace in ways that I think this book really, really needed. It took until page 200 for the plot to really get to a point where I'm like, okay, this is a slasher. I really had to companion read with the audiobook. I think that really did help me feel like I was making progress in the book. And it also added personality because the audiobook reader did a really great job at providing personality of the individual characters in her tone. So I think if you wanted to buddy read this with a audiobook, I highly encourage you to do so because she does a really great job at performing this book. You really get to know a little bit more about what Jade has been hiding about herself. And it's really incredibly sad, the truth that is unfolding about Jade's experiences with um, familial abuse. And I just found that to be super heartbreaking and the book itself has been leading us to that point. So it's not a super shock when we learn about this. Once you get to probably around page 300 and like 70, you see just people are dying. Like the book is really making up for lost time when you get to the last few 50 pages of this book. But Jade is really turning the tide here. I think you do see that character development with her where she has always been somebody who's empathetic, who cares about other people. But I think because of her past trauma, she really leaned into the slasher horror genre in ways that I found really unhealthy and incredibly toxic. So you do see that she's a complex character, which I found interesting. Like it kept me reading even when the plot itself really wasn't moving along. And it was really just kind of evolving and rotating around Jade as a person. And when it comes to thinking about my first and only viewing of Friday the 13th. I think I would give that film about maybe 2.5, maybe even a three on my enjoyment scale. You have a really interesting plot and I think it's cool because this is I think where the camp blood references in this book really come through because she's referencing a whole lot about Jason and uh, Pamela Voorhees, like there are a lot of allusions to Friday the 13th that I didn't get at the beginning of the book, but now that I am circling back having watched Friday the 13th myself, I get a lot of what she's saying in here and a lot of the references about her mom and wishing Jade, wishing that her mom was a lot more committed to her child like Pamela Voorhees was in Friday the 13th to the point where she would even massacre a whole camp of counselors really hits home and really gets me to understand Jade as our main character in ways that I didn't understand. So again, the crucial necessity of having seen those slasher films prior to reading this book. So overall, I'm really happy at the ways that this book is evolving into something a little bit more tense, a little bit more slashery. And I am looking forward to watching Scream tonight. I've been really cleaning around here, organizing the apartment while my boyfriend is away visiting family. So it's really nice to be able to kind of enjoy reading at a leisurely pace, spend some time getting my life together before the school year starts. Stacy Graves wriggles into the shallow cave with her, drapes her mother's arms around herself and goes to sleep until the hated water seeps in with them.
Okay, so I just this very moment finished reading Chainsaw. I had also before that finished Scream, the last of the four slasher films I wanted to get to this week. And my mind is reeling and also just really super obsessed with how spooky my day, my whole week has been earlier today. And I'll get to my final thoughts on this book right here in a moment. But earlier today, I did some Halloween shopping. There's been a lot of code oranges, a lot of Halloween in July sightings out there. I went to Home Goods, I went to Marshalls, I went to Michaels, I went to At Home. <sighs> As you probably know, I really, 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 and I'm getting distracted by my slasher earrings I purchased. I got these in the mail today, actually, after I started recording from Shein, and I thought I'd put them on because they totally went with today's film, which was Scream, and I also have, and I'll show you a, a close-up. It says horror movies and chill. So this is my little pin I've been wearing all this week. I will give this book a three out of five. I went into this book with a lot of high hopes and I knew that Stephen Graham Jones was going to do great things. Um, I'll start with the positives. He is a phenomenal writer. I absolutely love the way he writes. He included a lot of like slasher film references. There's one towards the end of the book that I was like, thank goodness I did my film, my slasher film watching because he makes such subtle references in the kind of in internal monologue of Jade that you wouldn't pick it up and you wouldn't get it if you were not literate on slasher films. So there's this one line here on page 388. She was always trying to be Randy from Scream. The Cassandra Scream 2 would nod to, who would become a literal Cassandra on videotape in Scream 3, but she knows that, if anything, she's crazy Ralph. This is Jay talking about how she wishes she was Randy, who is the kind of horror film know-it-all in Scream that I just watched. It was fresh in my mind. Uh, but really, she is probably the town's crazy Ralph, which shows up in Friday the 13th, which I watched yesterday. So it's little things like that where really you gotta know the slasher film genre pretty well. There's some other references that went over my head a lot. Like she was referencing things like something with like Alex, like she said Alex a lot. And I think that has to do with something slasher movie related. I finally got like the last things, like the last page where he mentions um, a feeling and emotion about her mother that revs her heart up like the chainsaw that it is. Like it just lines like that. There's another line that's, um, the night is an embryo, Jade is quoted as saying. So it's just small things like that where I find them to be so creative and so unexpected, especially after reading a few of the other books that were on my summer, spooky summer TBR, that were dull in the writing category and the voice was not super distinctive. This was very refreshing to read because Stephen Graham Jones knows how to write. As I've already kind of mentioned, I don't want to belabor this point, but it was a pretty slow book and I dare say I was a bit bored going through it and as I got to maybe page 350, things were heating up and it was just slash city, which was interesting, but the ending, I don't like the ending. Just like any good slasher horror movie, it is an ambiguous ending. I think I kind of saw that one coming, but I want that closure. I want to know that she's okay, but the whole town is like eviscerated and it's insinuated that Jade is going to be the one taking the fall for it. And that just breaks my heart as the reader, knowing what she's gone through, what she had to experience in her childhood, just that week as somebody um, experiencing all that death around her at such a young age, despite the fact that she was really eager for her town to become a slash slasher movie. We know as she's really experiencing it, she's really regretting that because it's one thing to think about things as movies, the whole other thing to see death in front of your eyes actually happening and not on a screen. So we do have some empathy for her as we move forward into the later parts of the book. It's just unfortunate that I don't feel like right now, and again, I haven't had time to really sit and process this book, but I just don't feel like I like the ending. But maybe as I 
kind of sit with the book a little bit more, that might change. And then lastly, getting to my thoughts on Scream, I think I give it like a 4.5 out of 5, like almost a 5 on my personal enjoyment scale. Scream was so good. Like the acting was great. The storyline, the background, like you really care about these characters. Nev Campbell is such a great final girl. I love that it twists and, and, and totally disrupts the slasher horror genre tropes and really kind of turns it on its head and there were references to other films in there that I had watched earlier this week that I was able to get because I have that kind of understanding. And watching Scream was a really great compliment to the podcast I listened to earlier today from Stuff Mom Never Told You about the final girl trope in horror films, which I'll link down below. It basically is speaking to the larger use of women and sexual imagery in horror films historically and it is cool because i got to really see in the 70s 80s 90s through my watching this week all of the different ways that women have been portrayed and it's largely being um created and crafted these narratives are being created and crafted by men largely being viewed by men and you really see how the historical context of the time period is dictating and influencing what the creators of these films think that largely men will want to watch on screen how should we portray women well how do men view women at that time let's project that on the screen so I really found that podcast to be super interesting. So if you really like looking historically or even sociologically at horror in general um, through like a gender lens, definitely give that a listen. Overall, this week was a really great opportunity for me to become a little bit more horror literate. It's been fun to dive into the summer with a spooky splash, getting to read horror books and it's really helping me become so much more aware of who I am as a reader outside of history and nonfiction. So I really welcomed this opportunity to pair both books and movies together because definitely it is necessary when you're reading a book like this that relies so much on the horror film genre. If you're not aware of that, you're going to be missing so much of what that genre has to offer your understanding of this book and the journey it takes you on. So thank you so much for going on this journey with me. Definitely if you enjoyed this video, I have more things like this coming. Feel free to leave a comment down below about what you thought about my heart as a chainsaw, especially if it's a little bit different than mine. And let me know what your favorite slasher film is. Maybe it's something that I haven't even watched yet. What do you recommend? I'm totally open. The world is my bloody oyster. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see y'all spooky peeps soon.